Now that we've created our tables and we've chosen data types and talked about those, let's talk about setting primary and foreign keys. And I want to show you how to do this in the Server Management Studio. Now, if you're not familiar with what primary and foreign keys are, I would direct you out to the documentation. And I'll tell you very quickly here, I'm going to open, notice I'm going to right click on the parts table that I created in my sales database. And I'll modify this table. And this will bring it up and let me see it. Now, Real quickly, the primary key is going to ensure that every row in my data table is unique from every other row in the data table. I don't want to get to the point that I've got 100,000 lines in here and 40,000 of them are identical. So I will simply say I want to make sure there's a unique part number on every row. So I'll right click that and choose set primary key and you'll notice the little key there and this has set that as a primary key. Now, if I want to create a foreign key relationship to another table, it's very easy to do here, and I want to show it to you, but before I do, let's say I want to create, notice I've got a part number column in the parts table, and I'll modify the inventory table. You notice I have a part number in the inventory column, in the inventory table, excuse me. I'll right click that part number and set that as a primary key, because it's going to require that both my primary and foreign key either have the unique constraint on them, or they be primary keys to maintain integrity. If you're not sure what I'm talking about with primary and foreign keys, go read the documentation. But notice now, I want to create a relationship. Notice the two tables that I've modified, parts and inventory. I want a relationship between these, and they're up here in tabs because I've modified them both. Well, on the parts table, I want this to be the foreign key table. So I right-click anywhere out here in the work area, and I choose relationships. And then notice the foreign key relationship, I will click add in the pop-up box. And notice here it says editing properties for a new relationship. The tables and column specification needs to be filled before the new relationship will be accepted. So I'll come right here to the tables and column specification. Click on the little ellipsis button and notice it says, okay, your foreign key table is going to be parts. Where's your primary key table? So I will choose inventory. Then I will click here and it's kind of deceptive because you don't see a drop down until you click and I will choose part number for my primary key there the foreign key which one I can choose it in parts table here I'll leave it as part number I simply say OK and I just created a primary foreign key relationship between those two tables now very easy to do it's a little bit clunky the first time you do it clunky is a technical term you know but you'll like this once you get into it. You can obviously do this through Transact SQL, although a lot of people like to do it within the uh, graphical user interface. Coming up in another video, look for a video entitled Diagrams, and I'll show you how to do something similar in a diagram environment. Again, a lot of people find this even easier. So that's how to set up primary and foreign keys. Now, before we leave, I want to show you one more thing. If you remember when I right-clicked a few minutes ago, I can set and remove my primary key right here. Notice there's an insert and delete column, and I want to show you something here. If I want to insert a column between weight and location, if I click on weight, right-click and choose insert column, I can now go back and add a column right there. That's really a cool function if you're really picky about where your columns are and you have to change your tables. There's no way to do that in Transact SQL that I know of. In Transact SQL, you alter the table and it always adds the new column on the end. So I didn't really know where to put that in this course. That's probably the best place. So you can just right click anywhere and stick a column in there that you want. Just like right here, I can insert a column there. So anyway, real cool way to stick columns where you want. Obviously, I can delete a column as well. So I can right click, delete that column. Very easy to do.